everyone, and a great big welcome to Cabin Fever Crochet with me, Helene, here for a little something special and extra in between my other projects going on. And I am part of a Cal Crochet Along, originally with my friend Nancy of Nan's Next Knots, and it was back by popular request. She was all ready to get started with it, which starts today, right now. And I had joined in with her as a, a collab to do just the tutorial portion so that those of you who would like to join in and, and like to have the visual to go along with it, well, here it is for you right now. And unfortunately, though, Nancy has been having some health issues. She's unable to participate this time, but she did want it to continue on. So she has passed the torch for the weekly crochet along the weekly draw with Trisha of Mama Swift. That's her channel, Mama Swift. And the link to her channel, everything else I talk about, will be below in the drop-down description box and in the comment section so you can refer, refer back to her channel and even a couple of links of Nancy's channel uh, with the previous couple of previous Luck of the Draws. So it's called Luck of the Draw. This is number six and the theme is Sunset. And let's see if you have any questions about the crochet along itself, please direct those to Trisha at her channel because she's going to go over everything, explain all of what you need to know about that. And then as mentioned, a couple of Nancy's previous. So if there's any additional information, ideas or tips that the link will be below. So you can look at those too, if you like. But if you have any questions, related just to this tutorial that I am doing here, then of course, by all means, ask, leave your questions and comments below for me. This is a really, really easy pattern. And for all skill levels, it's fun. And it's a great stash buster too. And Nancy has given just enough rows to make it fun and look forward to the next week However, you know, not too much. So then that way you can do other projects and other things going on in your life in between. And even though the cowl is for a full size blanket, you don't have to do a full size. You don't even have to do a blanket at all. But if you want, you can do an afghan, a throw, maybe a table runner. She has so many great ideas that other people have done, even a shawl. Well, I'm sure Trisha has some great ideas too. And one last thing, if you would all please send Nancy positive healing thoughts, lots of love, prayers, and well wishes. We would certainly appreciate it so very much for her total full healing and recovery. All right, so now let's just go ahead and get started with the tutorial. The Cal Crochet Long is worked in a variety of colors, plus one main color throughout. and. They are worked in a series sets of three rows per sequence and you alternate the main color with the new color that is drawn each week. But for the purpose today of showing Nancy's pattern, I'm going to be working in one color only. Although last year I did start the crochet along, just playing around with some stitches of my own and I'll bring that out as we go along to show you how the alternating colors work in to the crochet along. Okay, so if you're doing the crochet along, you will start your first three setup rows in your main color. So whatever your main color is, you grab that. Okay, and you can start two ways for your first row. You can either work a long chain as long as any number of stitches to an odd number. So your stitches can be 15, 57, 81, 121, doesn't matter as long as it's an odd number. So you go ahead and make your slip knot, however you make yours, okay? And then you just chain, chain, chain. And if you are working with the beginning chain, I do highly suggest going up one hook size from whatever hook you'll be working with 
for the in the yarn for the, the entire rest of your blanket. Go up one hook size. That'll help prevent your chain from being over tightened and shrinking in your work, curling it in on that first row. Okay, and then you just work back along the chain for four row one. Okay, into the third chain from the hook. So you skip the first two and you work one double crochet in that third chain from the hook. The first two skipped chains do count as your first double crochet. Now traditionally, most often, usually chain three for the height of a double crochet. But in this piece, Nancy found that it just worked up a lot nicer if you just chain two as your first double crochet, which we will be doing at the beginning of each row throughout the work. All right, So just go ahead, double crochet in that third chain from the hook and in every chain all the way across. And that's all you do for row one if you are making a long chain. Okay, Double crochet in each chain across. That's option one to begin. So for option two, you may work a foundation double crochet which builds your chain and double crochet into one. And the result of that, it's, it's a much more forgiving beginning, if you will. It's much more stretchy and pliable fabric and you don't have to worry about any over tightening. And you can go with the same hook size for the rest of your work. So to work a foundation double crochet, you begin by chaining three. Go back to the beginning chain by your slip knot. We're going to build, like I said, the chain and double crochet in one. So you yarn over just like you're working a regular double crochet. Insert your hook to the first chain, yarn over and pull up a loop. And that is going to turn into your first chain by yarning over and pulling through that first loop. And there is your first chain. Now if you're new to this method, then grab yourself a stitch marker or equivalent, whatever will help to mark that chain. Okay, And it's going to be a lot more visible as you go. And then now you just go ahead and you complete the double crochet as usual. Yarn over, pull through two. Yarn over, pull through two. See, I kept my finger on the chain. So visually, I'm going to explain to you what's going on here so you know what to look for. So when you work the foundation double crochet, kind of um, your stitch is set up in an opposite direction. So instead of having your chain on the bottom and your double crochets on top, you can see as we're working now, the chains are on top and the double crochets are on the bottom. Coming from the loop on your hook, you have these two vertical loops. Just below that is the rest of your double crochet. And then you will find the chain just below your double crochet stitches. Okay, Here are your double crochet stitches. Here is the first chain, the left back loop, and the right front loop. So you're going to yarn over, insert your hook through both loops of your first chain, yarn over, pull up a loop. You have three loops on your hook. Yarn over, pull through the first. Now, see so you've created your second chain. Now complete your double crochet as usual. Yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. Okay, so again, the two vertical loops coming off the loop on your hook. Below that is your double crochet going across and just below the second set, the two loops, two loops, there is your chain. You can see it starting to form. That's where you will place a stitch marker. And then again, yarn over, insert your hook through both loops, yarn over, pull up a loop, Yarn over, pull through the first. There's another chain, and it's getting more defined. Go ahead and work your double crochet. Turning it here now, you can see the chains forming. Here's the first, 
the second and the third, the front and the back loop of each. Okay. All right, I'll work this a couple more times and then we'll just move on to the pattern. Okay. So you go down from the double crochet stitches into your first chain below, or your, the last chain that you just made. Okay. Yarn over, pull through the first for another chain, and then work the double crochet. You see it's getting more defined. The chain is going to be sticking out a little bit more, and then the double crochet stitches are closer together. So you have the two verticals on the loop. This double crochet completed below that, and the chain to the left below the double crochet. All right. You just keep working this process over and over. Once you get the hang of it, it flows very nicely and you will see just what a nice combination that is for your beginning chain and row 1. Okay? So the next step Everyone will do the same from that point forward. Okay. Okay, so this is going to be my little sample. I have an odd number, 11 double crochets, including the first two chains at the end. And that will count as our first double crochet that we made when we worked that first foundation double crochet right there. All right, so now everyone. For row two, I'm going to go ahead and chain two as the first double crochet and turn, and the chain two belongs into this first stitch, so we're going to work into the next stitch, place another double crochet, and double crochet in each double crochet all the way across row two. Okay, and row three is exactly the same. And by working three rows of double crochet just gives you um, a more solid base at the beginning. All right? And when you get to the end, you have your be beginning chain two, so you will work into the top of your chain two, otherwise known as your turning chain. Okay? And insert your hook through both front and back loops, all right, and bring it nice and tall to the height of your other double crochets. Okay, that completes row two. Again, chain two, turn, double crochet into the next stitch and in each stitch across, and I will meet you at the end. And all three rows for the crochet along are worked in your same main color. And now at the end of row three completed our three row setup and now on to rows four, five, and six, which will be our repeat rows throughout until you get to the very end. And this is where you will bring in your new color working the crochet along and that new color is whatever it winds up being for the draw each week. So the first draw of the week, which is today, then you will pick that color and then you will work your next set of three, rows four, five, and six, and it will look something like this. Okay, so main color is this light gray. This teal color is the first color drawn. Okay, and then, then we work back to the main color. So from this point forward with our first set of three rows, four, five, and six, you will be alternating your new color and your main color. Then you will go again next into your new color, main color, all the way throughout. Let's go on to row four. Row four is another all double crochet row and that is work the same in your new color. Chain two and turn into the next stitch, double crochet, and place one double crochet into each stitch. 
each double crochet all the way across this row. And I'm at the end of row four, all double crochet row, the first in our three row repeat, and now I'm working into that top of the chain two with one more double crochet. And now again, this is in that same new color, your first color of the draw, okay? Then we're going to move on to row five. Okay, row five is a fillet crochet row, also known as what Nancy calls a window stitch. Okay, so again, you're going to chain two, and we're going to put a border of three double crochets at each end of the fillet crochet row, and that again helps give a more stable and structured edging on each side. Okay. So the first two chains count as your first double crochet. Now you work into the next stitch with a double crochet and one more double crochet in the next for a total of three double crochets. Now you're going to chain one. Make sure you keep your chain the same as a full size stitch because it does count as one. So after you chain one, you will skip one. So you skip the next double crochet into the next, chain one, skip the next stitch, double crochet into the next, and that is your repeat all the way across up to the last four stitches where you chain one, skip one, double crochet in the next, chain one, skip one, double crochet in the next up to the last four. Then you chain one, you skip the next, and you double crochet in each of the last three double crochets, including, as always, the top of your chain two, that turning chain, into the front and back loops. Remember to bring that loop up nice and tall to the height of the rest of your double crochets. Okay, so there is your fillet crochet row right here. Okay. This was the first double crochet, row four. Now this is row five, the row we just completed. Your double crochet, chain one, skip one, double crochet across. And now for row six, it is simply another double crochet row. So you chain two, into the next stitch, work a double crochet, and into the next. Okay, and then now you are going to double crochet in every stitch across. So that will be one double crochet in each chain one space, and one double crochet in each double crochet. Okay, you can go into the chain one space, not through the chain, just around it, double crochet, and into the next double crochet. That's all there is to that. Double crochet in the chain one space and until you get to the end and then place one double crochet in each of the last three double crochets for your border of three double crochets at each end. Okay, and those are your repeat rows for five and six. And there's row four. One fillet crochet row with three double crochets at each end and followed by one double crochet row. And then for this week, which is week one, you will be beginning with those first three set up double crochet rows in your main color. Okay, then you worked rows four, five, and six that we just completed, double crochet, fillet, double crochet, four, five, six, these three rows, and then you will repeat rows four, five, and six next in your main color. So week one, you will work these three sets, two of the pattern, rows four, five, and six, and then rows one, two, three, the beginning, all right? So your work will have main color, 
color of week one, the new color, and then again you finish with main color, but they will all be worked aside from your beginning. Three solid double crochet rows, the body of your work will be four, five, and six. Okay, and then each consecutive week, week two, three, four, and so on, then you will have a new color that's drawn and Trish again is going to explain how all of that works and that that will be you know her her baby from that point on so you will have this this much on week one and then the next week will be a new color and then your main color so two sets of rows four five and six and that's what you'll be doing every week okay and then when you finish you will just go ahead and work again three solid rows of double crochet, all double crochet in your main color again. So you will repeat row four three more times just like you did at the beginning with the three rows of all double crochet just to mirror what you did at the beginning. And because it does have a nice edge by itself, you don't have to add a border to it. And I, had, I don't have, this was just a sample that I worked up. Um, but it gives a really nice clean edge. I haven't, you know, like I said, I didn't sew my ends in, so you can see those sticking out. But you really don't need a border unless you want to. You can certainly add your own on. And another nice feature to this pattern by working an odd number of rows is that you wind up with your tail ends that you cut off evenly distributed on both sides. So when you sew them in, you won't have all the bulk of your ends on one side and the weight will just be more even on each side. Okay, so I do believe that that covers everything. I know it's a very simple pattern, but I wanted to be thorough as always and especially for beginners so that hopefully you are able to follow along with that too. And also I'm going to leave a link below to a pattern that I have that works really well for this crochet along. It's called the Good Fortune Blanket Stitch. And that is below. I have a tutorial for that and I also have a written pattern in my Etsy shop too and that link is below as well if you'd like to check that out and any of my other videos. And if you haven't already subscribed, I hope you will and we'll come back again next time for more tutorials and yarny fun together. Okay, we'll take care everyone. Have fun with your crochet along. All right, whatever it is that you wind up making. And until next time, I will see you soon. Okay, bye for now.